Thank you. Yeah. Um, we are Deakin University's capstone team. I'm Nicholas Mack. Peter Wells. I'm Brian Calvota. Michael Michael. And our sponsor is uh, Iman. Uh, just a little bit about Deakin before we start. Um, we established here in 1974. Um, the university uh, based on Australia. And a little bit about um, Iman. He teaches an embedded systems class. They work with um, Raspberry Pis, and he kind of teaches them kind of like the basics of and how to use uh, Raspberry Pi as well as a bunch of different functionalities so that they can kind of move on to the next class where they can um, fully use the potential of Raspberry Pi with um, robotics and kind of with playing robots movement, things like that. Um, so the situation given to us by Amon is this. There's always a need for safer driving in America. And as we all know, drivers can be very careless and very distracted. There are autonomous vehicles that have been made to try and solve this problem, but as you look outside, you can see they are not real common. And realistically, they won't be common for quite a while. So between now and whenever it happens that they do become everyday items, there's this opportunity, opportunity to make new technology that can be used to kind of predict a driver's needs. New devices, new algorithms. And we'll be looking at some solutions for that. So imagine a scenario where you're driving down the road and your car immediately starts telling you, hey, I'm out of gas, I'm out of gas, but you don't know where the nearest gas station is. Our system would then tell you, hey, you can make it to this gas station, or hey, you're running out of gas. This is the only gas station you can make it to with how much gas you have. Let's stop there and not continue on the road. Other situations could be, um, informing the driver of possible weather conditions that they could possibly run into into the future instead of other instead of the weather conditions they're in right now because they can look out their window and see that but what are what's coming up in the future oh, yeah, i forgot to skip to the next slide so how, how, are, how are we doing all this so first of all uh, we need components we need the things to make it work like i said earlier in Mons, uh, university beacon they use a lot of work with raspberry pies that's the same thing we're going to be using. We're going to be using Raspberry Pi along with the GPS hat, which allows us to get um, a fix on a satellite. Um, it's like it's just live GPS data. Um, unfortunately, inside here it won't work, but you have to be outside. Um, even that window, it seems to kind of have some problems, but um, it seems to work while you're in a vehicle, which is great. Um, and then the other great thing about that is that since um, people at Deacon are using Raspberry Pis, anything we make and that works on the Pi, they're going to be able to. Um, utilize and work on in the future. Um, the programming language we're mainly using is Python. I'm using that along with a uh, Kiwi library, which is kind of used for like widgets and um, kind of like buttons and things like that with um, open source API. So Iman's really uh, kind of hammered home that we need to use open source material. Um, so we're going to be using OpenStreetMap for Mac data, um, eventually using weather, uh, weather data from OpenWeatherMap API, I believe. Um, so that will let us get weather data along our routes, um, and then, yes, we're going to use OpenStreetMap to get like the route data to draw our routes on the map. Then that allows us to, uh, for drivers to make better decisions on the road, so kind of finding things along the route since we're drawing our own route, um, we're going to be more in control of what, what's around our route, like service stations and things like that. So our schedule so far was uh, sprint one. We uh, was a little slow. We um, it was mainly based on like researching new uh, APIs and resources that would help us in the future. So there wasn't a whole lot of um, coding or getting stuff done. Um, as well as we set up a bunch of hardware. The Raspberry Pi needed to um, have some soldering done on the GPS hat here um, uh, to connect this connector so that we can connect it to the Raspberry Pi to use it. Um, we had to set up a uh, operating system on the Raspberry Pi so it was usable. Um, in Sprint 2, we spent a lot of that uh, time like actually coding and getting out there and um, doing what the project is kind of based around, setting up the map, setting up routing. Uh, currently, we're working on getting pins to drop for gas stations along the route and set up uh, like rest stops along the route as well. Uh, <clears throat> some analysis of our user stories for, or through these first couple sprints. The uh, first sprint, 
Uh, the user stories we focus on where as a driver I want to be able to see where I am on the map so I can know like, my current address uh, and I want to be able to interact with the user interface so that I can easily access program features. Um, these ones we were able to hit within Sprint 1 by, by just getting a really basic map to drop a pin on uh, specified uh, latitude and longitude. Um, and that, as Nick was saying, we didn't really have a lot of experience with Raspberry Pis or Python in general in my case. So we kind of had to start from scratch to, to build up that knowledge base. And then in Sprint 2, uh, we focused on uh, as a driver, I want to be able to set a route from my current location to my destination, so I can find the shortest path to my destination, which is where we're currently at. We've, we've got a, a little map showing up on the Pi with the ability to draw a, a route from one point to another. Uh, we also want to be notified about relevant stops along the route uh, so that we can stop where we need to. And we want to tell about weather along the route so that we can be sure that we plan our route accordingly. Uh, those last two user stories are the ones that we're trying to wrap up as as the end of the sprint approaches at the end of the week here. Um, but, yeah, so currently, as I was saying, we have a map set up with basic routing. We have the Raspberry Pi here set up with the GPS hat here, which just connects right onto these pins and looks like so. so it's, Pretty small, but yeah, we uh, I think with Brian had it in his car, and that was the only time we were actually able to get a fix was when it was outside, um, like completely outside, not next to a window. So that was interesting. Um, but for a, a little demo of what we have here, did that work? I'm still mm. stuck in. Hang on, I'm gonna pull this out and plug it back in. It's stuck in presentation mode. Still stuck in presentation. Go though. back to the presentation. Yeah, I gotta get it out of there. One moment. Technical difficulties. How do I get out of this? That button. Aha. Yeah. Hmm. Use your mouse to drag it over to the other screen. Oh, is that what it is? Oh, I see it. Okay. Oh no. So, if it's on the other screen, I don't know how to grab it. Easier oh. to track that to drink. Good call. Good call. Yeah. I thought it was mirroring screens. Okay. So, should be able to actually so now, button. if we run our map quest, it should. Oh, of course, it brought it up on the other screen. There it is. So this is our, our basic map. It, uh, it uses OpenStreetMap, as you can see in the corner there. Um, I don't actually know. Uh, so it's set up for a touch screen, but I think, yeah, the trackpad is working for it. Uh, but yeah, you can click and scroll all around. Um, and if you want basic routes, we just set these up. I dropped a pin on my apartment in Niskanen over at Fargo Dome. Uh, and then if you click these buttons, it'll make an API call to OSRM, which then, which is uh, like an API built with OpenStreetMaps to generate route coordinates. So if you hit a route to the OB, it really quickly makes the API call, parses out the JSON, and <clears throat> draws a bunch of lines between all the coordinates to get the, the route, route to the movie theater, and route to mini golf. Those are just the three real quick examples I have and as you zoom in closer it actually is fairly accurate to to sticking to the roads oh, my my zoom is inverted on my touchpad there we go but yeah as you can see it follows the routes pretty precisely it should be beneficial um, where's my yeah, we'll go back to the to the presentation now. Gotta open it. Oopsie, and then plug it in. I think. No dice. That's fine. Technical difficulties. Flip this back around. Yeah. Nope. 
exit out of the presentation and open, uh, present again. Let that do it. Present. Where is this? Yeah. There we go. I swear I know how to use computers. Um, Next slide. Yeah. There it is. Um, so this is just an example of what the OSRM JSON looks like. Uh, we pass in the starting latitude longitude, ending latitude longitude, and it returns this, which all we really need out of this is the geometry coordinates, just that list. Um, this is a simplified route from my apartment to the old Broadway, but uh, where if we if we set a parameter in the uh, API call, it'll send back like 200 coordinates to get a really fine detailed line. Right. Uh, some next steps that we want to do, um, mainly the user stories that we want to do, uh, we want to make sure that if the user goes off of their route, they automatically get rerouted again. We've all done that, we all get lost pretty easily. Uh, we also want to make sure that uh, something we're going to do this sprint, hopefully, if the user is running out of fuel, we can check their fuel gauge, we can check their MPG through the OBD2 sensor, which we'll just simulate for this project. We can check to see if they'll have enough fuel for the rest of their trip, and if not, get them to the closest service station as soon as possible. Um, some risks and issues that we ran into were um, we had a few issues with some of the uh, APIs that we used, like OpenStreetMaps originally when we were using it, uh, wouldn't load the proper tiles or load them at all, which we got around by finding a better API that worked very well with the Raspberry Pi, as well as uh, getting a GPS fix. The only time we really tested it was inside, um, but once Brian brought it into his car on a drive to campus and just tested it, uh, we found out that the GPS was working and that it was just that we were inside and uh, that it's, it has troubles getting a fix when inside, but it works perfectly fine outside, which was a uh, big, um, a good thing to see. <laughs> um, we also spent a lot of time with uh, PyQT to build a very engaging user interface for our users so that they could um, use it properly, but after some testing we found out that it actually doesn't run well on the Raspberry Pi, so that's what, that's when we switched to Kiwi, which is built to be used with Raspberry Pis as well as has mapping services in it, which came very in hand and useful for us. And then a little bit of reflection on the projects thus far. Um, I think Alex likes to hammer this home a lot of time in this class and his other classes is start early, just uh, start as early as possible that way you can get all your questions answered. Um, and you're gonna have to do do the work anyways, so um, I mean, starting now is any different, starting later, you're just starting later. So, um, and then the other thing was, it was a little slow as far as getting features kind of rolling, just because the group as a whole kind of had to get used to um, Raspberry Pi. Um, none of us had uh, had any experience with like any like routing APIs or anything like that, and then, as well as like Python and what libraries to use, things like that. Um, so a lot of sprint was kind of just figuring out, researching what do we need to do, um, what do we need to kind of get the features rolling. But by sprint two, we kind of uh, found our stride a little bit and started to be like, oh hey, we can start to add these features and we know a little bit more to um, kind of get our user stories down. Um, yep, and then uh, another thing we want to do um, for our project is improve our GUI bit and add like a search function, to, like, like you know, type in a destination, type in the next one and kind of actually get directions towards your route and um, just more details on, for the user. So uh, any questions? Yeah. So in the future, uh, I know you guys keep mentioning examples with fuel and checking mileage. Mm -hmm. Are you planning, or how are you planning on integrating that into your application? So our application specifically is part of a bigger idea that Deakin University is working on. We're just working on the uh, kind of the software side of the mapping and routing and stuff but this project will then be integrated into a bigger project where they'll have integration with uh, reading data from cars, whether it's the fuel levels, the mileage, um, tire pressure, stuff like that, that could
cars nowadays have sensors for all that. So that'll be another part of the project that another group from either Deakin or possibly NDSU, if they team up with a uh, like electrical engineering team, I don't know how that stuff works, but it, we're just a small part of a bigger uh, solution. Yeah, we'll probably be simulating using button clicks or something like that. We haven't fully decided that yet. Okay. Where can you pull all of, excuse me, all of the uh, gas station information from? Right. There is a website called is it mygasfeed.com that provides an API for the United States. It's really helpful. Give it a location, give it a radius of how many miles you can go, and it'll tell you all of the gas station with their prices, and it's really nice. Yep. Any other questions? That's good. Right. Thank you for your time. Thank you.